President Mohamed Buhari and the visiting Secretary Antonio Guterres today engaged in talks bordering on war against terrorism, food security, and other international issues. We welcome Guterres at the State House at about 3 p.m. before going into closed door discussions on matters affecting Nigeria, Africa, and the world at large. Guterres, who arrived in Nigeria on a two day visit, was in Meduguri, Borno, where he interacted with victims and repentant Islamist militants on Tuesday. He is visiting Nigeria for the first time since he assumed duty as UN Secretary General. He had before the meeting with President Buhari performed a wreath laying ceremony for victims of the 2011 bombing at Nigeria's UN House in Abuja. There's really no true solution to the problem of global food security without bringing back the agricultural production of Ukraine and the food and fertilizer production of Russia and Belarus into world markets despite the war. And I'm determined to do everything to facilitate the dialogue that can help achieve this objective. Coming at a time when the entire global attention is focused on the unfortunate situation in Ukraine, we in this region are feeling already that the world is forgetting about us. There can be no better assurance that the world is with us as we confront extremist terrorist organizations, hunger, and the enormous problems of dealing with millions of displaced people than this important visit. Paul Ejima, an international affairs expert, join us now to take a look at the significance of this visit. Good evening, Mr. Ejima. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you for having me. So why does Nigeria need to wait for Russia and Ukraine for food sustenance? Well, that is uh, part of the uh, uh, you know, governance problem that uh, Africa you know, not just Nigeria, but Africa, they have had to deal with uh, that um, they are not uh, self-sufficient in food production. And um, so um, you have to depend on those who can produce and then you continue to buy. Um, you remember that recently there was a talk about uh, rice pyramid and all that. What has happened is that Nigeria has taken eyes off the ball. Uh, Nigeria is an agricultural uh, country, but um, has really left all that. Remember the palm, the story about the uh, palm tree and palm kernel and palm oil. Uh, the the uh, Malaysians came to Nigeria and then they, they took uh, this the uh, uh, north, and now um, they are the uh, world's greatest um, uh, ex exporter. While the Nigeria is still um, maybe becomes a net uh, importer. So it is about policy. Um, about governance, about uh, being able to put your house in order, to um, grow what you can eat, and then, um, you know, um, live, uh, even export. Nigeria can do that. Remember the days of uh, the, the um, granite pyramids? You had uh, coal in, um, you know, in uh, cocoa in, in, the, in, the, in the West, where you had cocoa building, and then the palm oil that we're talking about in the East. So, but all that, Nigeria doing a, a catch up. Um, it's about um, system failure um, and uh, policy failure. So, that's what... used to be addressed. So, they don't, Nigeria they don't have any reason to depend on anybody, not let, let alone uh, Ukraine or, or, or Russia for food. So, what are the foreseeable gains of the meeting today between President Buhari and the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres? Well, remember this is the first time the Second General visited in Nigeria. Uh, he took office in 19, uh, 2017 and has been to a number of uh, African countries, even to Togo nearby. And uh, this one, he has been to Senegal and then uh, Niger before coming to uh, Nigeria. What can Nigeria get from there is about talk and then maybe promises about what uh, the UN can do. But really, well, the UN can do well, because of the agency. You have the World Food Program, you have uh, all those that are um, affiliated to the uh, international organization that, can, that have been helping and can also help. 
You have the World Health Organization. So all these are dual systems that um, can, um, and that is their role, actually, because belonging to these organizations means that you have to benefit from them. So it's not just so much that they are doing um, Nigeria a favor or any other country, because you are a member, and that is what um, you, it's like an umbrella that's supposed to cover you when there is rain. But uh, what has happened is that, um, like um, the president was saying, that it looks like Nigeria, uh, Africa is um, not, not on the radar. Look at the kind of um, international um, uh, mobilization that has come behind uh, Ukraine. You wonder, what about the conflict that have been happening in Africa? What about malaria, for instance? Malaria kills more people than all the uh, international conflicts put together. Every hour, you know, a, a child under five dies, or, you know, a woman with pregnancy. So, but what has happened? The world has not even as much as uh, come with um, a vaccine that can really be the, uh, uh, the, 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 the what you can use, the bullet, uh, uh, silver bullet that can, you can use to stop this uh, uh, deadly uh, uh, disease. But um, when it was COVID, you know, everybody's uh, rushing, which in uh, one year or so, they were able to come up with a uh, vaccine. So Africa, but you don't really have to blame the outsiders. I think much of it is about leadership in, in Africa. African leaders, Africa is not zero poor and can change for itself, can feed itself. But what has happened is that it has leaders that are not, um, that are taking their eyes off the ball, they are uh, selfish. They are, you know, uh, uh, corrupt. They are, uh, uh, you know, fending after themselves and their family and uh, uh, their tribes and their religious groups instead of uh, uh, taking care of the collective. All the money that Africa uh, makes, all the you talk about corruption, what they they would warehouse some of this money abroad, outside. I mean, uh, you know, and then go outside there to enjoy the money. I mean, how can the, the people be, behave that way? Maybe it's a case of. Uh, some mental uh, problem that Africa has. The Africa has a lot, more than it has, enough to, to feed itself and then take care of all its needs. But what you have, uh, conflicts here and there, five uh, uh, African countries have been governed by uh, military, as we speak. And then uh, terrorism is there, you know, ready to there. And then, um, you know, if one conflict or the other, disease, you know, conflict, wars, that is what uh, Africa has become known for which is unfortunate. Well, how, is Nigeria doing enough to pull its supply weight in the global community, would, would you say? We must. Is Nigeria doing enough to pull its supply weight in the global community? Well, the, I think that question is, um, you know, the answer is there, um, uh, uh, you know, in the air. The country used to play a major part in the past when it was... Um, you know, when using the oil, uh, the petroleum dollar, oil dollar to to, to affect and the effect uh, international uh, relations, making sure that uh, many countries in Africa got their independence. Countries like Zimbabwe, Namibia, even uh, apartheid uh, in South Africa, Nigeria was uh, uh, instrumental to bringing it, uh, 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 you know, bringing it to an end. But what has happened today? Um, even at the ECOWAS, look at the ECOWAS level, I think Nigeria should uh, do more to uh, bring its weight. And then uh, it can't be about potential. Nigeria has always been described as a country with great potential. But potentials cannot translate by themselves into greatness. You need to, you need, you need to make it work. You need to work. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.